Okay, so we've decided we're going to make a um, a website for a kind of wee fake company called Friendface. All right. So um, what normally what you would do in this case is you would do some wee sketches and stuff like that. But because we're just um, doing it quite quickly, I'm just going to click and create new fireworks document. Now I've got to decide what the size this logo is going to be. I don't want it to be particularly um, huge, but what you've got to understand, look at what the dimension of your screen is um, when we're doing this. All right. So you've got the option of I would say a couple of hundred pixels wide if I'm just going to make it a wee square. All right, so um, I'll make 300 by 300, um, and I'll keep it as a white background and go with that. Okay, so I'm just going to go for uh, maybe just the letter F. Don't know where I get that idea from. All right, um, but what I can do is go with my type tool here and just type. I'm going to type by an F, right? Now obviously that's tiny, so I'll go. Um, into here and I'll get the text size away up. Okay. And you can see there that it goes to crosshairs when I've got it um, in the middle. There we go. And I'll muck about with the fonts here. Um, and I, again, this is something that you can do for, for ages. Let's see. I'm using fireworks here. Yeah. Um, let's see. Nah. <laughs> I don't know where you get that idea from. Uh, let's see. So I'm just looking to see what fonts there are. Uh, it looks a bit army, doesn't it? So, uh, I was looking for aerial black, but I can't see it. See, it's not on it. Yeah. Yes, made a new one. No, I'm not doing Comic Sans, no, no. <laughs> think so? That one? Right. Okay, so what I'll do, you'll see that I can't make that any bigger, but I'll go in here. 128, maybe more. Right, so I'm going to have to decide on, on a colour here. Now, I can put that in the middle. There we go. And what I'll do down here. Let's all bring that down to size. Okay. Now, what colours do you think? Pink? Purple? And then you can do other things with fireworks. You can put filters on, right? Um, so you can do all sorts of stuff with it. Right, it's about 70, isn't it? Right, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep it flat, okay? But you can make, you can um, emboss it and stuff like that if you want. Now, another option I could be was maybe to put something around it. So I could go um, look at the rounded rectangle. And I could take the colour out of that and say no fill. And get a kind of thicker line. Something like that, and I'll try dragging that around and see what it looks like. Now, what you'll see is that it looks like it's hidden it, but I can right click on it and I can go to um, the arrange center back. That's it. Okay, go with that. And maybe if you wanted to embolden that, you could see. Yes. I don't think it's quite as good as my original, but we'll, we'll go with it, okay? So what I would do here, now, bear in mind what I was teaching you about earlier on, if I was making this as a, for a proper company, I would do something like this the same as an Illustrator document, so it could be stretched, but I'm just going to go with that just now, okay? So I'll go File and Save As. Now, what I'm going to do is give you a copy of that, uh, that graphic. So I'm going to call it um, 
Uh, friend face logo. Now, in here, there's a wee option and it says append.fw.png. I'm going to take that off. Okay, and the, the, so the actual file name is just friendfacelogo.png. And I will save that. I'll save it on my desktop just now. And what I'll do is I'll put that in the BLE. Okay. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is make a wee, a wee colour scheme, clicking on from this logo. So I'm going to um, find out what colour it is, and it's 660066. So I'll um, go on, I'm going to go on to Cooler. Uh, Adobe. Okay. And what I'll do, I'll put in there. 660066 and you'll see it almost creates a kind of colour scheme off it, right? And that uses the compound colour scheme. Now what you can do is you can use different rules. So you can get complementary and I can choose my main colour as being 660066 and that gives you a, a kind of colour scheme off it, alright? Compound, shades, so that's various shades of it. Analog, triad, hmm, what do you think? Don't, I'm not sure about the brown, but maybe the other ones? Right, okay. So, what we'll do is we'll, we'll go for that for our colour scheme, right? Now, I'm just going to keep that page in the background, okay? Um, and I'll refer to it when I'm, when I'm building the, the site. So, as I say, I'm doing this kind of off the top of my head, so we'll see how it works out. Right. Um, okay, so we've got the image and we've got the colour scheme. So, the next thing we've got to do is, is, make the, is build the site itself, alright? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a uh, uh, Cloud9, okay? Um, give me a wee second, I'll just get into there. Right, now I want you to get to this screen where you can create a new workspace, okay? Who wasn't here last week? Just yourself? Okay. So everyone should be logged into Cloud9. Right, so we've got the style for the page and we're going to go into the Cloud9 workspace. Now, let me see. Okay, so I'm going to create a new workspace for this, alright? Project name, I'm just going to call it Friend Face. And you can put a description in, alright. Um, this is our social networking site. I'm not going to bother putting a team in, right? Just leave that out. I'm going to leave it public as well, alright. Yeah. Now. I'm not going to do anything particularly fancy with it, so I'm just going to choose HTML5 as my, my template, alright? So once you've put in the name, the description, choose HTML5 and click on Create Workspace. Okay. And it'll take a wee minute to, to kick in. Now, I'm only going to make one page, but I'm going to make it um, well and then save as. So get it perfect and then duplicate it. Alright, so you, won't, you only, see if you're designing a website well, you can only really make one or two pages, right, because there's never any info more, right. Um, also, I would probably use PHP to make mass produced websites now, but this is just the, the basic markup language of it, alright. Um, it'll take a minute for the container to build, but so be it. Okay, so it comes up like that. Now, we don't really need to see the bash down at the bottom. We don't really need that open in this project. So I'm just going to close that. All right. Um, and I don't know. I can just leave that open just now. Right. The first page that the server looks at is what? The index page. So I need to go to file. And I'm going to go to new file. And it gives me this. Okay, 
So I'm going to build the page up. I'm going to say uh, doc type HTML. Okay. And then I'm going to put an HTML underneath that. And a couple of blank lines and close my HTML. Like so. Okay. So the first section of the web page is what? The head. Okay, and a couple of blank lines and then the head. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to tab the head in, like so. Because the head belongs inside the HTML, yes? What's stuck underneath the head? The body, alright. So the body like that. Okay, so I'm going to go, at this point, there's, there's, there's no content in my site, but I'm going to go to file and save as, and save it as index.html. Okay. Right, inside the head of the document, I'm going to have my title. What will my title be? Friend face, all right. Okay, I'm going to have um, two. I'll try two devs for this, right? And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put in a, a div to contain the logo, right? So in here, I'm going to say div id equals logo. Okay. Now the only thing I'm going to put in there is the image, but we'll come back to that. And then under there, I'll have a div id equals content. Now, this might seem a bit daft what I'm about to do, right? But I'm going to comment the end of the div. And the reason being that if you lo use loads of divs in a web page, you can, you can get lost from where you are. So in there, I'm just going to say comment, so it's dash dash end logo. And underneath that, exclamation mark dash dash end content. Now, hopefully you understand that makes absolutely no difference at all to the, um, the output of the site. But it's just your structure that better. Okay. Right. Now, I want to put these in inside a container, so I'm going to put a div around this as well, right? So I will take a new line. And say div id equals container. Now that will contain all the information in the in the site. Now you'll see there it tries to finish it off for me. I'm going to take that end tag out and put it down here and put a wee comment there as well. End of container. Okay. And that's my page so far. Right, so what I'm going to do here is I want to put a logo up onto the server. So um, I'm going to right click on the friend face folder and make um, a new folder. 
and I'm calling it images. Okay. No, no, it's just for just for images just now. What's that? Okay, so I'm just going to drag this across the screen, and I want to find my um, my friend face logo. Okay, and I'm going to drag my friend face logo into images, and it should go in fine. Okay, like so. All right. Now, in order to put the image in. What I'm going to do is I am going to go into my logo. And there's a couple ways of doing this, right? I'm just going to stick to the very, the very simple way just now. Um, so inside the the logo, I am going to say I am. Well, if I can, I'm going to say IMG for image, SRC for source. I'm amazed the amount of people that type in SCR, right? But it's SRC equals. Now. I need to put in images because that's the folder I've put it in. Forward slash and what did I call it again? Friend face logo dot png. Okay. Now, I'll just zoom out a wee bit. What I need to do here is put in an alternative text. So I'll put in alt equals, and I'm just going to say logo, and then close your tag. So that's the entire tag there. Alright. Now when you've done that, save it, and click on the run button up here, and then preview live running application. Then you go to run, and that turns the server on, right? And once the server says started Apache, you go to preview, live running application, and you should see that you've got your logo there. All right, that's the first stage done. Okay, so the the, the logo has appeared in here, and have you all got that? Magic, right? Um. Now what I can do with this is um, I can click on the button and make it pop out like that, and that's the size of it. And that looks okay. Strangely enough, I've noticed in, in the Cloud9 environment it's got a kind of greyish background for me, but when I pop out it looks fine, so we'll go with that. All right. Um, okay. Now the the size of it is it's maybe a wee bit big at the moment, but we'll deal with that. Okay. Later on. So let's um, let's hide that and I'll get back to this. Okay. Is that size okay for everyone in terms of text? Is it okay? Um, right. So we've got that in the logo in the content. What I'm going to do is wing it slightly, but we'll we'll see how we go. I'm going to put in the nav, right? Put a section called nav, and in my nav section, I'm going to put in an unordered list. We looked at unordered list last week, didn't we? So I'll say UL like that, and then LI. Now LI is going to contain a hyperlink. Now we agreed we've got two pages in here, didn't we? So I'll say um, the first link is a href equals index.html, and that's the page we're on. Okay, and we'll just say home in there. What do we call a second page? Me or something like that? Yeah. Me thought HTML. My page. Okay. So I've put these two hyperlinks inside list items. And the list items are inside the unordered list. So it won't look great at the moment, but um, in terms of making your site good for search engines, you should always have your hyperlinks inside um, bulleted lists or unordered lists, as they're called. All right. And we'll, what we'll do is remember, we're only making the structure of the page just now. So we'll come back to this and make it look nice. 
them separately. All right. Um, so what you want to do is save that and have a quick look. And you can see you've got two bullet points underneath the logo. Yes, okay, and it does say, it doesn't look great, but that's not a problem at the moment. Right, underneath the nav section, um, I'm going to have, um, I'll have a heading on, and the heading one I'm just going to call friend face, all right. And underneath that, only reason I'm putting this in because you need it for the assessment is HR, horizontal rule. Okay. And underneath that, I'm going to say P for paragraph and just say, um, welcome to uh, our social network. So we've got an image and we've got a list item. Okay. And we've got a hyperlink. Look at this. All right. So I can't off the top of my head remember every single thing we need to do in the assessment, but that's a first, first uh, section actually. So if I save that just now and I refresh my page, it looks like that. Yes. So I looks a bit rubbishy at the moment, but we'll, we'll soon tidy that up, okay? Okay. Right, any questions? I'm happy. So we could put an um, extra text in there if you want, but you'll understand it doesn't matter if it's three lines of code in a paragraph or one, it's, it still formats it the same way, all right? Um, okay. Right, what we want to do here, have we all got that, yeah? You all okay? Right, I was going to go, I'm going to go up to the head section. And underneath my title, I'm going to make a link to a style sheet that I've not made yet, right? So, I'm going to say a link, href equals, whereabouts, up here. No, let's do the link. All right, href equals, and I'm going to say CSS is the folder name and forward slash style dot CSS. Um, relationship equals style sheet. Is there anything else? I could never remember. I remember last week I did this as well. Calm, hey, any thoughts? Type equals good man. Could do a calm in every class. Text slash CSS. Now, oh, you know, the funny thing, oh, I say funny. It, the thing is, I, I don't type that very often, and that's why I, I'm not very good at it, right? Yeah, that's why I forget it all the time. So, I'm going to save that, okay? And what we'll do is we'll have one wee last look at the, the um, that won't make any difference to what's going on at the moment. We'll have one last wee look at the codes and it looks okay to me. Um, yeah, it looks alright. Okay. And what I've tried to do is make it as uh, well indented as I possibly can because it's a bit easier to read. So all this stuff belongs to the container. Um, all that is the content. But the content and the logo belong to the container, so it looks okay. All right. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is going to go to file and new. New file, sorry. And the first thing I'm going to do is save this as now. Save as. And the first thing I want to do here is click. I'm going to click in friend face on my save as screen. Right and go to create folder and I'm going to call this folder yeah I'll call it CSS style sheet's fine if you want but I'll go CSS all right and my file is called styles.css wasn't it yeah style or styles is it style singular okay these things matter so 
and see. Save it. Click on CSS and it should be in there. Now, I'm just going to double check that. And what you should see is. Oops. If I refresh that. There you go. Style.css belongs in the CSS folder. So you'll see that. All got it. And if it doesn't, just drag it into it. Okay. Right. Now, what I'm going to do here, um, I'm going to change the body background, right? So I'm going to say body and background dash color. Now, remember I looked at the color wheel earlier? Well, I'm going to make the color wheel, I'm going to choose this a uh, dark green. What do you mean? Well, I'm just going to copy that, right? And then uh, put that in as my colour. 05332C. Okay. All right. And if you refresh your page, it should look like that. Looks rubbish still, right? We'll get there with it. So I've turned the entire background, the uh, body background, uh, that kind of greeny colour. Now, we had me also made a section called a container. Yes. Was the container a class or an ID? Can you remember? An ID. So therefore, I say hash container. And I will say background dash color is, and that one's dead easy. That's F F F F F F. I make it white. Save that. Now, if you've done it correctly, you should see it now looks like that. Okay. Now the container's taking up most of the window here, but I'm just gonna I'm gonna give it a bit of space to breathe. So I'm gonna say width is eighty. I'll go eighty-five percent, right? And what that means is that no matter what your window is, the wind, the the width will always be eighty-five percent of that. It's like an accordion almost. Okay, so if I save that and refresh it, you'll see it becomes a bit narrower on the right hand side. Now, there is a line of code in, uh, in style sheets that is um, it's probably the best line of code you'll learn because it centers things, right? And it's a wee cheat. You want to put a margin around this container. And what you want to do is have the margin on the left the same as the margin on the right. Now, as a shorthand way of writing this, the way it goes, right, if you all have a quick look at me, is it's top left, bottom, right, so it goes around like that, right? But what you can do is do shorthand and you can say top, so margin zero means there's a no margin at the top or the bottom, but if you say auto on the left and the right, well, it knows that the width is 85%, so it takes the rest of it and distributes it evenly between them. And what you should see in that case is that now your div sitting in the middle. Okay. So the white bit's sitting in the middle. You all with me? You all got it working? Right. If you've not got it working, now I'll come round and help you, right? But what you've got to look for here is make sure firstly style.css is in the CSS folder, right? And make sure that your link is right. Okay, that'll be where you've fallen down if it's not working. What? What do you mean? 
Um, oh, you can you can you can change the text size and stuff. Oh, aye, aye. Aye. You can do all sorts. Right, so who's not going to work in? Right. Aye. Right. Okay. Um, so we've done our we've we've done a wee bit of the container and it, it looks like that. So next thing I want to do is work about the logo. All right. Now there's a there's better ways of doing this with the logo, but um, the logo was ID, wasn't it? Right. So I'll just say hash logo. Okay. And the width was 300, wasn't it? We made it in Fireworks, it was 300 pixels. So again, what we'll do is we'll say margin zero auto, and that again centers the code. Okay. There you go, width 300 pixels, because that was what the size I made it in Fireworks. Okay. Now the um the container I think will look better with a, a wee border on it, right? So I'm just gonna go back to my colour view. And I'm going to give it a lighter border, so this one here I'm going to choose. So that is, um, I'll show you the code in a wee second. So I'm going to go back into the container section and say border um, is 09B299, okay? And I'll say it's 3 pixels for the width, 3px, and solid. Okay. There you can see you get a kind of lighter border around it. Possibly just going to size it. I'll, I'll maybe size five pixels. See if that improves it a wee bit more. All right, and you should see you've got a kind of lighter green. If I nudge that over there, like so. Like that. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's strange, isn't it? Aye, aye. Just didn't, didn't. Was, we just styled it like this. Um, aye. So, um, what we could also do is if we want to put in um, border dash. I'm going to say border dash radius now. I don't know if this will work. I'll try it. There you go. That rounds the corners. Okay. So you can work it out with the number and see what one you like. I'll go with 20 pixels for mine, that looks a wee bit better. Okay. It, it'll look a bit strange on the preview at the moment in, in terms of the left hand side, but. Now, what you'll notice here, right, is. If I see in the left hand side, see that sliding out of that? So what I can do is I can give it a minimum width. So I could say a min, a min width and say 3, 320 pixels. And what that means is it, it stops sliding um, once you've refreshed that. There you go, see it stops sliding out of it. Okay, right, now, <clears throat> what I want to do here is give it a nicer font. Okay, because the font we're using is kind of, um, I think it's the Times New Roman that's coming out of us. 
Aye, right, so it's rubbish, right? So let's let's give it a nicer font. Now, what I'm going to use here is Google Fonts, okay? Um, so I will go into uh, Google Fonts. And what essentially you do is you make a link to the Google Fonts library, and then just pick the font that you want, right? So let's go into Google Fonts. Okay, uh, let me see. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is um, I am going to choose. Do you think that would suit it? <laughs> I'm going to go no two sans, is that all right? You can choose, right, if you want to choose a different font, it's exactly the same way, it doesn't bother me, right? All right. Right, so uh, Roboto, you're saying? Roboto condensed. Go with Roboto condensed. Go with that. Happy with that? Right, okay. Right, we'll go with Roboto then. Bog standard Roboto. All right. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and select this font. Okay. And you'll see down at the bottom it says one family selected. See that? So I'll choose one family selected. Now, what this does is it allows you to um, to use the font and then reference it in the style sheet. Now, the important thing here is the order you do this in, right? So, what I want to do is I can do it in two ways. Sorry. Um, okay. I'm going to try this. I mean, this might work or it might not work. See this first line, the at import URL. So I clicked on the at import button. Yeah. Yes. Right. So I'm going to click copy that line. I'm not going to take the style tags. I'm going to put it in the external file. All right. Don't know if it'll work, but if it doesn't, I'll do it the other way. Right. Okay. So in there, I clicked on import. Yeah. And then that one line, I'm going to copy that. Now, I'm going to go into my top of my style sheet, to the very top, and paste that line of code in. Okay. Alright. And save that. Then I'll go back to Google Fonts. And if, whenever I want to use the, whenever I want to use that font, I'm going to put this wee bit of code in, Font Family Roboto. So I want to use it in the body of the document, so I'll paste it in there. And save it. Okay. And hopefully it changes the font that it does. Alright. The first code goes at the very top of your style sheet. First line of your style sheet up there. Okay. And it doesn't matter what font you're using, that's the way you, you go about it. Alright. You can, you can use multiple fonts as well if you want to. All right. Again, uh, um, what the, the one wee thing that it shouldn't be a problem. The more fonts you load from the library, the more it slows your web page down. But we're talking tiny amounts of time here. All right, but just be aware of it. It can have an impact on it. So I'll save that and refresh my page. Yeah. So I want that in the. In the the font in the body, but say I changed my mind with this, right? Watch, so watch this. So I'll take it out the body, and I'm just going to stick it in the nav section, right? So I'll just say nav, and if I refresh that, you'll see that the other bits go back to Times New Roman, and that bit's affected. All right, that's not what I'm looking for in this, so I can take that back out of there. We understand. Whatever you tell it to affect, that's what it will affect. All right, so I'll put it back in the body because that's what I want. Okay. Now, 
a wee, a wee thing here. If Google was to go down, the fo- your fonts would refer to Times New Roman. However, if Google has gone down, I think we have more problems than what font you've got. All right. But yeah, I'm just letting you know you're hosting this somewhere else. So if there's a problem with them, then that could knock on to you. Right. Cup. If I'm if I'm picking some holes in this, I would say that um that's far too tight to the left hand side of the container. Agreed. Right. So what I want to do is style that. So in my container, I want to put a margin on the left hand side. And I'll say margin dash left is I'll say 20 pixels in the container. No. Right. Right, so what's going wrong here? It contains a big box, right? But I've done some daft. Well, here's what I've done. Look at line 11. I've said margin zero auto. I've overridden that with that line of code. It's not the margin I want to do. What is it? Padding. Brilliant, right? So I say padding dash left. And that gives it a bit of space to breathe inside the box. So padding dash left is 20 pixels and refresh that. And you'll see now you've got a wee bit of room, okay? Right. The next thing is the, the menu looks a bit rubbish. Yes, agreed? Right, so let's try and style this um, a wee bit better. Now, will I cheat a bit with this? No. Oh, come on. Let me cheat. No, I know. Listen, I'll show you how you do it, but it just sort of got one that I made earlier. Hey, okay. I've just got a style sheet that I've made before, and I'm going to use that again. Are you, ha- are you happy with that? Or oh, do you want me to keep on doing this without looking? Am I sure you're a bit okay with that? Yeah, okay. See that. Okay, so as you can tell, you've twisted my arm and I'm not going to use my notes for this, right? I'm just going to do it off the top of my head. <laughs> right, so what I'm going to do is uh, go into the style sheet. Now, the section I'm working with is nav, okay? Because that, that we'd call the block nav. Now, just to clarify, we didn't, it's not a hashtag nav, it's not a dot nav, and the nav is the tag, all right? So just put in nav. And in the nav, I've got another unordered list. Right, and the first thing I want to do is make to make this look good is to take the um, the bullet points off of it. All right, so I'll say list dash style dash type. There's none. Okay, and if you save that and I'm just I'll, and refresh it, you see the bullet points disappear. Okay, that's just your first step in it. Um, I'll then do a say margin zero. Uh, padding zero, and I'm going to make sure that the um, it can't go outside of its own box. I'll say overflow hidden. All right. Now, if I refresh it and save it, you see it's sitting up there, right? So I've taken off all of the styling from it. Okay. Right. So the next thing I want to do. Um, I'll flo- I'm going to float this to the left hand side. I might not know I need to, but I'll show you. Uh, positioning the style sheets is quite difficult, right? Um, and what you can do is you can float things to the left or to the right. And it, it's almost like putting a magnet on it and making it stick to the left hand side. And if you float it to the right, it sticks to the right hand side, right? So it's positioning the style sheets is still quite tricky. Um, but what I'll do here is um, I will say nav li. Float left. Now, I don't think that will make much difference to our design, to be honest with you. Okay, so it nudges them up and there's no space between them now. Alright. So that puts them up on the same line. So now you can see I'm doing a horizontal menu, yes? Rather than a vertical. Alright, so now I want to actually format the anchor, which is inside the list item, which is inside the nav. It's like, have you ever seen the Russian dolls? Right, so it's that sort of idea that this is inside, this is inside, this. 
and that's how you refer to it. So we're in the nav, and we're in the list um, items inside the nav and the anchor inside of that. So I'm going to say display block, and that displays in a rectangle. Um, color. Uh, I don't know if the colour scheme will work this, I'll go, I'll go white and I'll put the text in the centre. And I'll put padding around it. Padding, 50 pixels. Now, Again, I'm looking at the shorthand here. 15 pixels to 15 pixels. What that does is it puts padding as 15 at the top, the right, the bottom, and the left. All right. And then I'll say text dash decoration is none. And what that does is it takes the underline off the link. Okay. Okay, now the obvious thing is it oops it's disappeared. That's because it's white. Right? So I'm gonna go with my colour wheel again. Now I'll use the uh, I'll try that kind of goldy colour and see if it works. It may look rubbish. I'll go with the goldy colour, right? Now we're going with the colour wheel. There's maybe logic in the colour wheel. So, 735D0B. i refresh that. It's not bad. Now, there's a couple of things that we can do just to mess about with this, right? Um, the gold, it doesn't look too bad, right? It's um, not perfect, but still bad. So, what a couple of things I like is to have give the user feedback to whether they're over a link. All right. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to um, you, I'm going to make another um, style for the nav. So, in the nav, I'm going to say a uh, background dash color is is zero 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 which is black yeah logically i would probably create that above the other one so it doesn't it doesn't matter and you'll see now you've got a kind of black that's the nav box okay and what i could do um to, to style this a wee bit uh, better is say nav a colon hover and what that means is when the mouse hovers over it it will change colour so I'll just say colour that is FFF and that's white and then when the mouse goes over it it changes colour like so what's that um see for black and white you can get away with that for shorthand yeah That's okay. Well, I, I, there's a couple of ways of doing that, right? So, a couple of wee things um, here. So it, look, it looks okay. It's not. It's not brilliant, but I mean, considering that we've just kind of made it up as we went along, it's not. It's not terrible. All right. Um, I don't know if the black goes with it, to be honest with you, but so be it. Um, you'll see there that that's stuck to the right hand side. Okay. So, how can we get it to, to be, um, what's the word I'm looking for, symmetrical? Alright. If you remember, we made the padding. <laughs> now, the padding was done in the container. Yeah, you can just do padding dash right up in the container. For 20 pixels. Yeah. 
there you go. I know, I know. So, what do you think in the down of the first set up? It's what are you gonna say? Oh no, there you go. Right, so if you want to thicken the border against the container, right, and we've got border and I've got a colour. Now a couple of wee things. If you want to make that thicker, say ten pixels, right? Now I've said solid, but you could this will look rubbish by the way, right? But if I if I say thicken that and you'll see it, that looks okay, but it doesn't need to be solid. You can use dotted if you want. Dotted, there you go. So you can do dotted, 